Well, good morning, everyone. Wow. I'm sorry, I'm a little sleepy. Last night I had a long, long evening. Um, and this morning I had to get up very, very early, so I haven't had a lot of sleep. So you can probably tell in my voice that I'm dragging a little bit. I'm going to have to go and get one of those uh, energy drinks, right? <laughs> Especially to keep up with you guys. I mean, I see you guys all the, over the place, which is great. Um, uh, as many of you are aware, uh, Mount Sinai Aventura ER, which is located on 199th and um, Aventura, well, uh, Aventura Boulevard between Biscayne and Country Club Drive. Everybody know about it? <clears throat> Perfect. We're We've started a new program called the Healthy Connections. It's a volunteer program, and we're going to have a lot more of information about it uh, in the upcoming months. In the summer, we're going to be doing a lot of things with the city. Uh, we're going to be providing to the community, to the Healthy Connections Volunteer Corps, which uh, some of you are part of. We're going to be providing uh, CPR courses, first aid courses, we're going to be providing other uh, lectures, programs, just to the Healthy Connections volunteers. And this is a free program that we are introducing right now to the Sunny Isles Beach re residents. You're all welcome to uh, join. There's no fee. There's no added cost to it. Uh, you get a lot of services. Uh, you, you get a... a pro, um, a separate phone number, so if you need a physician, I, uh, there was a gentleman over here asking me about a referral physician. Uh, if you join the Healthy Connections, that's one of the perks that you get. You get a separate line to a, to a person that will actually you, uh, give you that referral. Find a doctor in your area, even if you don't drive or you have limited means of uh, transportation. Uh, they can find you know all that information for you. So probably next month, I'm going to be bringing that information over, uh, registration cards, and probably a speaker to talk to you more about the Healthy Connections. Uh, we have Dr. Alex Barocas. He's an interventional neurology, neurologist, is that correct? Neuroradiology. Neuroradiology, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I got I to gotta get... Okay, all right, great. Uh, I don't want to keep him because, you know, uh, doctor's time is always, always valuable, but they bring added value to these lectures. Uh, it's, it, they, we're actually doing something a little different today. After the lecture, immediately after the lecture, while the questions and answers are going on, we're going to have stroke screening, which is your blood pressure, glucose, and cholesterol. Uh, you'll get your results immediately. And then after that, you can go and have breakfast on us. So without further ado, doctor. Wow. Thank you very much. Good morning, Sunny Isles. How's the microphone working? Outstanding. How many of you guys are actually from Florida? Two, three? I, I was born, raised in Miami, Florida. Yes. And special audience member, my mom is here. Warm round of applause for my mom. If it wasn't for mom, I wouldn't have been educated. Uh, so thank her very much. Um, all right, so how many of you guys know what a stroke is? Show of hands. OK. All right, uh, someone tell me, what, what is a stroke? A brain attack. Yes. And what does that mean? What's that? Who said something about a blood vessel? What was that? A burst blood vessel. Well, that, that means that the vessel ruptures, right? Burst. That's, that's a different type of stroke where you have a bleed in the brain. And typically, aneurysms or artery vein malformations are what bleed. In a stroke, ischemic stroke, it's a clot in the blood vessel, right? And you don't get blood or oxygen to the brain, and that part of the brain dies. So I, I uh, did my training at uh, Massachusetts General Hospital uh, in Boston, and boy, was it cold. And you can see the snow building up there, and, and my colleagues all bundled up 
in a dark room with lots of x-rays and whatnot. Okay, so how many of you guys have heard of interventional neuroradiology? Show of hands. One. Interventional neuroradiology. Have you heard of interventional radiology? No. Interventional cardiology. Yes, where they go into the heart and they do a little angioplasty and stent and open up the artery. So stroke is very similar to a heart attack in that there's a clot in the artery from atherosclerosis or, 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 um, or just clot that has been dislodged and entered into the artery and has closed off the artery and not allowing oxygen and nutrients and whatnot to the tissues. But instead, in the heart, instead of the heart, it's in the brain. And so when that happens in the brain, you get deficits, uh, deficits like weakness. So you ask a person to raise an arm up, and they have a stroke, the arm gets weak, and they can't move their arm. Okay, so that's a motor deficit, weakness. Uh, there's sensory deficit, la loss of sensation, numbness, tingling, things like this. Um, inability to speak, aphasia. Uh, when you talk, uh, you employ several parts of the brain. One part of the brain is to initiate speech. The other part of the brain is to understand speech. Any one of these can be affected. Vision can be affected. So basically, any of the sensations, anything that we do is basically controlled by the brain. And if there is a stroke or a loss of oxygen and blood to a certain area of the brain, that part of the brain suffers and you get those deficits. Okay, so. Frequently, what, what uh, the uh, commercials that are, that are uh, generated by the American Stroke Association and the American Heart Association is that they ask people to smile, and if the smile gets crooked, then that's weakness in the face. They ask them to bring the arms up. If one arm can't come up, that's weakness in the arm. And the same with the leg. Um, so those are the things to keep in mind. Loss of vision on one side or the other loss of uh, weak, weakness in the face, arm, and leg, or sensory loss in the face, arm, and leg, one side or the other, or both. Um, and the reason why they call it stroke is because it's a sudden onset of symptoms. So that's, that's what we're dealing with here. And so let's talk about interventional neuroradiology. This is what I do. And it's, it's the latest advancement in treatment of stroke. And I just wanted to give you a quick um, rundown as to what it is, basically. It's angiography. We, we use a, a one-way valve that we can put in the artery in the leg. And through there, we can go inside the arteries and image the arteries. All right, it's very much the same as in a cardiac catheterization. Okay, we will go in, except we go to the arteries that go to the brain. And recently, there's been a lot of studies coming out about treatment of stroke from inside the arteries. Does anyone know what the current treatment of stroke is? When someone comes into the emergency room, they've had a stroke, they have right face, arm, and leg weakness, what can be done? Anybody? Stent. Sorry? Stent. Ah, stent. That's a good question. Right now, currently, the treatment is to give IV, intravenous, TPA. TPA is a clot buster. Okay? You inject the medication through the vein, and it dissolves the clot. But there are certain limitations to that. Basically, time. So from the onset of symptoms, you have three hours to get to the hospital and get that medication to dissolve the clot and open up the artery in the brain. After three hours, it gets dicey. There's recent studies in, in Europe that we can extend that time window to four and a half hours if the patient is younger than 80 years or if the patient does not have diabetes. Okay, so, but then after that, it really gets dicey. What do we do? This study here that's enclosed in a box came out in 1999 and really opened up new possibilities for treatment of stroke, where we go from inside the arteries 
just like I showed you in the previous slide, and physically put a little tube right next to the clot and inject medication at the clot directly. The beauty of that is that you use a much lower concentration of medication, you dissolve the clot right on the spot, and less, less, um, less chances of having bleeding in the brain or bleeding elsewhere in the body. So let's talk about stroke. National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke, affectionately referred to as NINS, reports that about 700,000 people have a stroke each year. 500,000 of them, first time, 200,000 recurrent strokes. So it, it is important to be able to treat the stroke in the first hand and then make sure you go to follow-up visits and prevent stroke from happening a second time. That's where stents come in. We'll talk about stents in a minute. Uh, stroke is the leading cause of long-term disability in the United States and the third leading cause of death for Americans after heart disease and cancer. So stroke is no joke. Okay, um, so here, here's my cartoon of what a stroke is. You see, here's the brain. Here are the arteries that go to the brain. There's basically four of them, the two carotid arteries and two vertebral arteries. They come together and form a little circle called the circle of Willis. Okay, and if a little clot comes flying up in the arteries and gets wedged in the artery, the whole area that that artery supplies is at risk of dying. Okay? Brain can only survive four minutes without oxygen or blood. But I'm talking about a three hour time window to dissolve the clot or even a six hour time window um, to, to go up there and remove the clot physically. And there's a reason for, for that. In the area where the clot is, there's going to be an area that's only supplied by the artery in question, and that area will die quickly. However, the area adjacent to it gets blood supply from collaterals, other arteries in the neighboring vicinity, which is good because there's, there's basically two sources of blood flow to that area, but it's bad because any one artery can't supply the whole area by itself. So basically what that supplies for us, the clinicians, is a little time to get up there and open up the clot before the whole area dies. And that concept is called the core, the area that dies immediately in the first four minutes, and then the penumbra, the area around it that's sort of drowning. It's not quite dead, but it's suffering. Over time, and I'm talking about hours to weeks, um, what happens is the, the small area grows into a bigger area because the adjacent vessels can't supply. I'll show you a slide of that um, shortly. So what do we do? A patient comes in to the emergency room. They get a CAT scan to make sure that it's not a bleed because a bleed in the brain can look just like a stroke can look like weakness on one side or the other, sensory, vision loss, inability to speak. And then we get an MRI. Um, and because of advances in MRI, we can tell what area of, of brain is salvageable. What can we save? So acute stroke is defined as the sudden onset of a neurological deficit, right face, arm, and leg, for example, weakness, within six hours of onset. The rationale for the six hour time window, the zero to three hours, we can give IV TPA between zero and six hours. We can physically go in there and pull out the clot, dissolve the clot, work some magic. Let's see, IV TPA. And this, by the way, is the type of lecture I give to my students, my residents, and other physicians. So I want you guys to know you're not being shortchanged. You're getting neurosurgery and neurology 101 right here. Um, intravenous TPA is the medication that dissolves clots. It was well proven uh, as very effective in the 1995 study that came out in the New England Journal of Medicine, known as the NINS trial. And then there's intraarterial stroke treatment. 
That's what we're going to be talking about as the latest advancement in treatment for stroke. Um, and basically, my subspecialty, interventional neuroradiology, is the latest and newest subspecialty of medicine. So let's get to some of the advances in imaging. Patient comes to, to the emergency room and gets a CT scan. A new, a new modality of CT scan that we're doing at, at Mount Sinai is the CT perfusion. This is what I learned at, at Harvard, and I brought it to Mount Sinai to, to upgrade what, what we're doing here. And it is very conspicuous. Here's a normal CT. Here's a CT perfusion, these three color plates. There's no question to what's, what's going on here. This area over here in blue is not getting enough blood, and it's suffering. And it's giving that 82-year-old gentleman left-sided weakness, left-sided face and arm weakness. We can tell, we can tell where in the brain, uh, what parts of the body are controlled in the brain. Um, and there's a little representation. This is called a homunculus. And literally because this part of the brain affects the motor control of the mouth, of the eyes, of the face. This part controls swallowing. This part controls the arm and hand. And, and, and the reason why the, the figure is so strange looking is because if you think about it, uh, when there's a mosquito that lands on, on your body somewhere, that lands on your face or a feather or something, you feel it on your face a lot more than, say, your arm. That means that there's, there's more brain involved in controlling your face because it's such an important structure, your face. It's where your communication occurs, et cetera. It requires more, more neurons. So there you go. That, that's, that's the representation of the body on the brain. OK. And so then along with the CT, of, CT perfusion, we get a CTA. A CTA is a CT angiogram. It shows the arteries in very high resolution. And so here's a cross-sectional view, and here's an up and down view of, of the carotid artery. There's calcification here, and where the arrow is, there is a atherosclerotic plaque. We can see it better over here in the subtracted view. So immediately you get the evaluation. When, when, a, when you come to a Mount Sinai ER, you get a CT of the brain, you get a CT perfusion, which helps show where the stroke is. Um, and you see the arteries from the, from the heart to the top of the brain immediately to find out what caused the stroke so that we can treat it. In this case, a carotid stenosis, we can use a stent. Okay, whoever brought that stent? We, we can use stent to correct that. OK, so I'm going to give you a couple of cases um, just to demonstrate uh, what, what we've done. Here's a 44-year-old lady. She presented with left-sided uh, sensory loss um, on her left. She, she, she noticed numbness on her left face, arm, and leg. And then she became weak on the left face and arm, and she keeled over, and then she passed out. Right? She came to uh, the emergency room because her daughter called uh, 911. And on the CAT scan, it's, it's not very obvious, it's very subtle. Right here, in this artery, there's a clot. On the CTA, now it becomes very obvious. There's a clot on top of the basilar and in the branches. This is the basilar artery, a nice white stripe here. That's the artery. And then because you can't really see the artery over here or over here that well, it's a little dark, that's clot. And then on the neck, we see where it came from. This is the vertebral artery which eventually comes together to form the basilar, there's a little clot there. That's caused by a dissection in the vertebral artery. Someone earlier was asking me about chiropractors. The Canadians showed a very good association because um, they, have, they have good records. Any, anyone who went to a chiropractor in, in one year and anyone who had a stroke in, in that same year, and they compared, and there was a high correlation of damaging this artery from chiropractic manipulation of the neck, OK? Now, you go to a chiropractor and you ask them about that and say, it's extremely rare, blah, blah, blah. 
that sort of thing. But rare and all, a stroke like this can, is life-threatening. So uh, for that reason, I don't recommend chiropractic manipulation of the neck. Okay? In the back, it's safe. In the neck, there's a risk of this. Okay, advances in MRI, we can evaluate viable tissue. Tissue that's at risk of dying, but hasn't died. And that's through the diffusion-perfusion mismatch system. Okay, we'll, we'll take a look at that. Here's a, here's a combination of pictures, CT scan. This is MRI flare se sequence, and this is DWI, diffusion-weighted imaging. DWI is the most sensitive imaging technique for evaluating an acute stroke, a stroke within six hours. CT scan will not show it within the first six hours, but DWI sequence will. There it is, nice and bright. Here's another series. There it is. This is the full vessel territory that that's, uh, has already died. So unfortunately for this person, there's nothing to do. But over here, there might have been something we could have done. Okay, same thing over here. Here's, here's what we were talking about, the whole perfusion idea. If, if you have a small stroke in, in the, at the end of the artery, um, but the rest of the area is at risk for dying, if you don't do anything, that small stroke gets bigger. Okay? That's the concept. Here it is. It's, it's small. There's a larger area at risk, and all that area dies. Okay? Sometimes... If you have a small stroke, large area at risk, but not, not all of that area dies. And that's because the body produces its own TPA. TPA is a natural substance produced by humans to dissolve clots. So <clears throat> the Celestial Committee of Design is up there helping us out, and we appreciate that. Okay, so when, are, when all the requirements are present, we can take the patient to the angio suite and pull out the clot. So if the stroke is within six hours, if there's a large vessel involved, and if there's a diffusion-perfusion mismatch. So that's just the, the parameters that I, sh I give to the emergency room physicians. Um, make sure that the emergency medical service has recorded the time of onset of the symptoms. When did the symptoms start? So time is important. Um, go to the emergency room, get the CT studies. If there's, if there's a cutoff, then, and it's within the three-hour window, we give IV TPA. And then if it's in the zero to six-hour window, we can go up there and pull the clot out. So interventional neuroradiology. How do we pull clots out? There's this new device called the Mercy Retrieval System. It came out in 2004. <clears throat> Right? It's only 2010 now, so it's fairly recent. Uh, this is the only device cleared for thrombus removal in acute stroke. It's offered in 225 centers in North America. Now we can say 226. Mount Sinai now has this. Um, and since, it's, since it came out, over 6,000 patients have been treated. The Mercy Retrieval device is it's basically a corkscrew device designed to engage the clot and pull the clot out. Um, here's a picture of the artery. There's a picture of the corkscrew device. You engage the clot and you start pulling it out and, and you put basically a, a larger tube in the artery of the neck where you inflate a balloon so that you don't have forward flow and you can suck it out the clot that's been engaged with the corkscrew device. This will be best seen in, in a little animation. This is by the company. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so there's the clot. Here's the wire. You advance the little catheter through the clot, take out the wire, advance the little corkscrew device. There you go, little corkscrew, right? And pull back and engage the clot. Set out another loop, 
there you go, there's the other loop. Pull back a little bit, then advance forward. And now inflate the balloon at the neck. Or we can, now we can produce a little suction. And with suction and pulling the whole clot back together at the same time, you can just pull the clot right out from the brain into the neck. And you just keep pulling it back out until you engage into the big catheter, which is at the base of the neck. Little suction. Get it all in there. All right. Deflate the balloon. No, no, it just literally pulls it out. No dissolving here. And physically, remove it. And, and that's, that's the idea with, with that device. It's a corkscrew device. All right, so here's a case where, where I did that in Boston. 68-year-old lady, uh, who, she, she was a local store manager. She was found with sudden onset aphasia, the inability to speak, and right-sided weakness for two and a half hours. Because she was on Coumadin, you know, the blood thinner, Coumadin for atrial fibrillation, she couldn't receive IV TPA. But she was within the time window. So we took her to the angio suite. The CT scan showed no hemorrhage. The MRI did show that there was brain to, to be saved. So we took her. And here is an angiogram. This is the carotid artery, where that balloon catheter we just saw, the loop here. And then here comes the artery. And then there's the occlusion. See, normally artery goes and supplies the brain. Here, it just stops. Over here, we pulled the clot out. And there's the clot there in the corkscrew device. And now you can see that there's blood supply to the part of the brain that wasn't getting blood previously. You know, it's, it's a sudden mechanical removal of the clot. The patient's strength improved dramatically by the next day. On day two, her speech was improving. On day three, she was walking with some assistance. And on day four, she went to rehab hospital. This is incredibly different from what would have happened had we not had the device. Yeah, she would have stayed paralyzed on the right and unable to speak, confined to a nursing home. Uh, you know. So interventional neuroradiology. It's here. It's the newest subspecialty of medicine. And they keep making new devices. Here's a device that came out in 2008. Um, and now we currently have it at, um, we currently have it at Mount Sinai. It's basically, again, another tube, but this time you can produce suction in the tube, and you have this little mechanical separator to break up the clot. Let's see the picture, the, the movie. This is called the penumbra device. There's a carotid artery. Here's the middle cerebral artery. There's a clot. We go up with the wire. Bring up the catheter, take that wire out, bring up the separator, go through the clot, turn on the aspiration. It's basically like a, a vacuum cleaner. It's a hoover for the brain. And it starts sucking, and you start macerating the clot with the little device, and, and you make sure it all gets sucked in. And then you keep advancing the little tube. And it really does work like this, like the, car like the cartoon shows. And so when you finally get that last little bit of clot in there, you notice that blood supply, the blood flow goes forward. And then you can take out the system. Turn off the aspiration, take the system off. And there you go. Blood, fo blood flow is forward. Some of the other things that we can do is use an angioplasty balloon, like in the heart. Um, use a stent. And of course, use TPA itself right there on the spot. That's, that's one of my favorites because it works so well. Now, as I was talking earlier, what happens if, if you don't treat an area that, that's um, at risk? Well, here's an example. 
the radiologists at, at Mount Sinai really are fantastic. They saw this tiny little stroke over here on a CAT scan. It's tiny, okay? The next, uh, the next day becomes more evident. It's, the, it's the, the back half of the MCA territory, okay? The MCA territory.